welcome to Stories of Hope. I'm Christine Hotchkiss. Each week, I bring you stories that will educate you, inspire you, and give you hope. <laughs> I want to acknowledge my studio sponsor, the Motivated Mind Group, your creative agency, located right here in downtown Chandler. Today's a little different. I started this podcast in a, on a dream, sitting on the corner of a street that said Bull Moose. No idea what that meant, but sitting on a curb and had this vision. And then I asked my dear friend what to do with it. So we're going to actually talk about me today. I share stories of hope of other people, but what about me? What's it about? Where did I found it? Please help me welcome my guest and dear friend, Christine Ellis, who also has her own show. And we made a promise that one day, if I was to have a studio, she was going to interview me. And so today, that is what she's going to do. Well, thank you so much for having me, Ms. Hachkes. I really appreciate being here. The main thing I believe that we can start with is the idea that uh, when you give and you shall receive, it is always stated that um, giving, it's more pleasurable, I think, to give than to receive. And today what we're doing is that I'm receiving a gift. Mm -hmm. I'm receiving a gift back from you because at one point in time, we did an exchange from myself to you, and now I'm receiving it back to you. What an amazing journey <laughs> this has been. And for the fact that I'm sitting here with you, it says that nothing is impossible to those who believe. And I would like the audience to understand this part of our conversation today, because it will be a conversation. You're going to hear a life story. You're going to hear pain, but you're going to also hear joy. At the same time, I think there will be within all of those lines, there will be a point where we will have to see a similarity in our stories as we have come to sit here and discuss this matter. <laughs> so, Miss Christine, <laughs> the first thing I would love to ask you, what are we doing here today? What, what was the big idea of being in the studio with you today, the big, the big idea behind it? As you know, Miss Ellis, um, we all have a story and some things good things come out of, or yeah. a vision, and my vision was to share the stories of other people. I've been told that with my loss, that um, I inspire people and I give hope. And I thought, well, why not? So through all of the stuff we went through yeah. in the years of the pandemic and otherwise, and getting back on our feet, I, I got through it, and today we acknowledged that Stories of Hope is official. Absolutely, so we just had a We did a ribbon in. celebration. We did a ribbon cutting, we had the mayor here, you have your own personal council member here. So <laughs> every- And my friends that wanted to be here and those that couldn't be here as well. Lots of people were in the studio yes. and that in itself shows that resiliency was part also of your story. Let's start from the beginning of this story. Um, when I met you, you mentioned that uh, through pain, you have arrived to understand what it's like to share with others. So tell me a little bit about that pain, because we're going to, to kind of take it from there and then move ourselves to a point of joy. Let's talk about that pain that really started. When did it start? How did it start? My pain? New Year's Day 2007, my family and I were in a rollover accident. And my 17-year-old 17 17-year-old 17 daughter, Nicole, was ejected and did not survive. And even though I'm coming up on 16 years, it still hurts. And I still put one foot in front of the other, in front of the other, and there's days I don't want to get up, and I get up anyways. Mm -hmm. And this is part of the legacy I leave for myself, knowing that the walk that I'm in, I allow other people mm -hmm. to know that even though there's pain, you can still find the joy that, that is in life. And we believe that those of us who have the, uh, uh, children or even loved ones that have passed on, mm -hmm. that they would have want us to be at a place. But how do we arrive to that journey? And I think that's when your part came in to really turn this thing around. Instead of living in your pain, instead of hollowing in it and staying in a place of defeat, mm -hmm. you rose above it. Let's talk about what did it take. It may be and uh, how, how, because I love the how part. We can talk about the what, the why, but the how give us uh, a place where we can hold on to something and just push forward with it for those that are listening today. 
So we're going to be really raw about this one. Or yes. When I say raw, but I say honest. So when the tragedy happened, and we do lose loved ones, yes. we almost feel like we lose ourselves for a while, mm -hmm. do we not? Absolutely. And then we think we can run away. Mm -hmm. And so That's I the did. That's denial part. Yes. And I did. <laughs> but I'm back here. There you are. That's but the when I thought part. I was running away, yes. I actually was clearing all the chaos and mm. all the troubles that I didn't realize I had consuming myself with the loss or the things that someone else had done or should have said or should have done. or the, the, A lot of going back and forth on yes. things that are not going the way we want to. And so when I moved away, I moved to a little town. I really did get rid of everything except for what would fit into the pickup truck and the mm, 8x10 trailer I on. had. <laughs> and I decided, I'm going to start a new life. Yes. Well, so I went up north and I took care of someone's ranch and um, found my peace. I didn't even know I was missing. Wow. I'm, I'm a very loving person mm -hmm. and I didn't realize that I can be loving and still have bad negative feelings mm. and probably even came across very heavy yes. with the loss of my daughter mm. um, and then just one day I, I heard this voice and you and I are very grounded in our faith yes, yes. that Absolutely. said Christine enough. <laughs> enough enough you're going to go ask people to share their story yeah. as much as you continue to share yours and I was like um who's speaking <laughs> Cause that's not gonna happen. I just love it. I just love when those <laughs> aha moments or the light came on all of a sudden. Yeah. And for someone who's listening right now, your moment might be coming now within this span of time where your aha is happening right now. And we want you to embrace it. We want you to just lean into it and find yourself because you're split right now. We says that we are tripod, right? Mm -hmm. Spirit, soul, and body. Yes. And for whoever right now is in that moment of being split where they can't find themselves, they're like, this is not me, this is not who I am. Why is this thing happening to me? But you just heard Miss Christine said it. There was a voice that says, enough. And maybe you have to be that voice in your head mm -hmm. that says, enough. It's time for me to get up and mm -hmm. pick up my bed mm -hmm. and start moving forward. I am so grateful you listened because it's one thing for us to hear the voice, but, but being obedient to it, it's a whole different thing. Mm -hmm. What made you feel that you had to trust that voice to please get up? Because you didn't know what the future was gonna hold. You, had, you knew where you have been, you knew where you are right now because it was painful. Mm -hmm. But where you were going, you had no idea. What gave you that, uh, mm, I got to do this? When I moved back down here into the valley thinking I'd run away, I actually was brought back. And I'm glad I am because I met all of you that yes. came to today's event as well as where I'm sitting today and the things that have come about in this time frame. Yes. Um, I was sitting on a curb and I kept feeling this push wow. of that same voice that I didn't know where it came from. Mm. And it just wouldn't go away. Yes. It wouldn't go away. And I felt, when do we ever feel... I'm lost. Mm. There's more to life. There's more to me. What's my purpose? Yes. What's my purpose? And I think that's what the, at that point, that's the question you had to ask mm -hmm. yourself because there's a voice. Now there's a question to be asked of mm -hmm. the voice. Do you want me to go or you want me to stay? Mm -hmm. And if the voice kept taunting you in the sense, haunting you to leave that spot where you are mm -hmm. there now and to go somewhere else, you have to trust that voice. Let's talk about, about that trust. You have to trust again, because mm -hmm. being vulnerable and being w able to be hurt again is uh -huh. not easy. Mm -hmm. You know that too. And so what makes you trust that voice to move forward? Because nothing else has worked. Ooh, come on now. Right. I love that part. Nothing else has worked. When you've tried everything else no. and it does not work. No. Pushing. I think the word is resistance. Mm. Resistance is, it just prolongs it. Yes. Whatever it is, it, you keep going against it and it's going to keep coming back at you. Mm -hmm. What is that saying that if, 
if it scares you, mm. it's meant for you. Yeah, do it afraid. Do it afraid. Oh. Do it afraid. How many people do it afraid do all the afraid. time? Do it afraid. And we do. We go, oh, that makes me scared. It makes yes. me feel uncomfortable. But then once you push through these things, mm -hmm. you're like, okay, I'm good. And maybe I'm happy. Maybe I found love. Maybe I found my purpose. Ooh. Though the list goes on. It's like, oh, why did I... I was I resisting for so long? Looking back, right? Oh, yeah, Looking yeah, back, yeah, you're like, yeah, yeah. this was where I needed to be. And here we are right now talking about it in a whole past tense kind of form. But at the time, it was for real. We are not demeaning the fact that people are going through things. We are not demeaning the fact that it feels like you probably will never get out of it. But we do know those of us who have gotten to this place mm -hmm. that you can. Now, let's be real for a second. Yes. Nothing's going to just magically say it's not going to feel uncomfortable anymore. Yeah. Uh -huh. We're going to constantly go through those roller coasters. We're going to have the reminders of things. We're going to have the things that come to us and say, mm -hmm. are we going to question ourselves? Absolutely. And it's okay, and you know this one, yeah. but it's okay to not be okay sometimes. Mm. But it's not okay to stay there. Yeah, it's not okay. No. It's not okay. So we talked a little bit about what is it? What was the pain? Where did the pain come from? And why uh, the pain happened? And then we just talk about a little bit of how you have been able to see yourself through the steps that you had to go through to get to where you are now. So what's next? Where do we go from here? How do we... I know the story of hope has become a beacon of light for so many mm -hmm. in this instant, in this time. As you mentioned before, we just got off two years of where people never, who never really had anything hard happen to them had to experience hardship. Mm -hmm. And they still made it. They are here. Mm -hmm. How would you tell them that the next step uh, to take? And why would you tell them that there is a next step to take? You have to hold on. But hold on for the right things, not the hold on of the bad feeling mm. that you have. I mean, there does come negativity with mm. holding on, mm -hmm. but there's the positive part that says, but, and I'm not a what if person, mm -hmm. but in this instance, I'm gonna say, but what if it's better than you thought? Yes. What, what if, if it makes you feel even more better? better. Or if that's even a word, mm -hmm. more um, comfortable, more loving, more giving, more free. Yes, that freedom. Mm -hmm. Let's talk a little bit about it. Because it, 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 can co it encompasses you when that pain comes, right? Mm -hmm. Every breath that you take, you mm -hmm. can feel it in every part of your body, every cells of your body. Because we are, as I said, tripod. So our spirit is hurting, our soul is hurt, and we feel it in our bodies. And uh, you wonder why you're sick. is because there's a pain that you're carrying mm -hmm. that you won't let go. And when you let go of that pain, did you feel all of those other part of you started to become one? It took time. I'm not going to say that all of a sudden you just flip over and say, I don't want to do this anymore and enough is enough. It, you actually have to reprogram yourself. You know this phrase. Yes. The phrase of your mind is more powerful than you think and you have mm. control over it. <laughs> That's but right there's another it. part that not only are we programming our minds, but did you know that our bodies are a program too? It's absolutely. It remembers pain, it remembers love, mm. it remembers excitement, it remembers fear. Yeah. It's a program. It's a program. And so you gotta learn to figure out or decide, not figure out, decide absolutely. what program do you wanna keep feeling? Mm. You use the word program and I use mindset, but it means the same thing. Mm -hmm. Your mindset dictates what your tomorrows are going to mm -hmm. be. Like for example, today when I woke up, it was like, ooh, the day I had been running, running, running the whole week. And I'm like, okay, what can I do right now to get myself to go? And I kept feeling, I can't, I can't bring myself. Then I called you. <laughs> I said, Christine, are we still on for this thing? And you said, this is not of God. If you're not here, you need to be here. I did. And right after we hang up the phone, immediately I had to go into that mode of mindset change, mm -hmm. a transformation. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that brings us always mm -hmm. to the place of restoration. Mm -hmm. And then once we're in a place of restoration, then we have to restitute. We find restitution in it too. So what is it for you to gain now in that place of restitution? Because you went through the transformation like a butterfly, because I know the butterfly, I have to mention the butterfly, because the butterfly is you, the butterfly is who it's you have become. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, here you are now, you know, you have been restored. Mm -hmm. Still being restored because we are constantly being redeemed, right? And, uh, but now there is something to gain from it. You know, I actually get joy out of sitting with other people and mm. learning about their journeys. There it is. That this is going to sound strange. It still helps me on my journey. Of course. I have days that I cry and mm. I never ask why anymore. Mm -hmm. And someone says, oh, things happen for a reason. I still cringe on that. Mm. But look where I'm at today. Yes. I now get to ask other people what gets them through their days. Mm -hmm. What was it that was the turning point for them? Or if somebody did lose their life. Mm -hmm. It affected someone else that found some way of giving hope to someone else. And thus, stories of hope right. arises. Because as we speak to others, as we help others heal, we are in the process mm -hmm. healing. There's healing happening right now, and I know it's happening also for those who are listening. It's happening because I have gone through my stuff, you have gone through your stuff. But the minute that we start paying attention to other people's needs, mm -hmm. there's something about that that opens a door for us also mm -hmm. for our needs to be met. And you have found that in you that's sitting in those two chairs, which I'm sitting in her chair right now. <laughs> I've had a fiddle all about it. She had to be fiddling <laughs> over there, trying to figure out, I'm like, out of sword and things. Like, that's my but chair. But this, this is what sometimes we have to do. We have to exchange seats yes. with our pain. Yes. We have to exchange seats with other people mm -hmm. and let them feel how we feel to be in that seat mm -hmm. and to be in those shoes that we are walking mm -hmm. in. I want to thank you for saying yes to this idea of uh, pick up your bed and get up and go, not knowing what the future was going to be. I it's wanna thank you for those people now, because of your story, because of you taking that chance or taking that step forward is uh, being healed now. I wanna thank you because you did not let uh, your daughter's life be in vain. I wanna thank you for having taken time to find hope and love in others. I want to thank you for everyone that probably will never have a chance to thank you that are watching you from all over the world because your show is all over the world. People are watching it. But for those people who probably tangibly cannot be next to you to touch you, I'm doing that today. And I'm saying thank you for them because one of us have to do it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we always got each other's back, so I'm glad it's you. Yes, one of us have to be the person to say, I'm going to push through so that I can bring others with me. So watching you, having been able to be around you when it was my turn, most people will say, well, how, how did you bounce so quickly? Or how? Well, it's because I had other people to, to watch. I had other people who had spoken of this with me, even when I couldn't relate mm -hmm. to what had happened to you, but I, I paid attention and, and, I, and I saw the transformation and I saw where you have been now. And so for me at the time when it happened, it was not that hard to pull on what you had already offered. Mm -hmm. Do you think that there is a place where if you don't keep replenishing yourself, it will be very hard for you to keep giving like you have been giving? Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> of course it is, because I have a few people in my life that say, don't spread yourself so thin. Uh, don't be there for everybody. Mm. Even if they're there for you, don't you don't have to be there for everybody. And, and I've had to learn to set boundaries in this change that I've gone through for the last four years, yeah. five years, six years, um, and set boundaries for myself because I have to be healthy. Yes. And I still have my own stuff too. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's me mm -hmm. that's important first. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's, a, it's a movement basically that you have started. It's a choice of my movement individually, yes. Come on, it's a choice. <laughs> so I was going to go from movement to a choice <laughs> and now you put them all both together <laughs> so we're gonna roll with it. So it's a movement that pushes you to choose mm -hmm. who you're going to be tomorrow. Every single day that you get up, tell me what are the choices, the hard choices that you have to make in order for you to still be here sitting on this chair. Those still happen often. Mm -hmm. I'm not, 
I'm not going to sit here and say I don't go through anything because that would be very false. Yes. There are days when I go, I just don't want to do this today. Mm. Right? There are days that I will drive into my garage and car still running and I'll just cry. Because mm-hmm. I'm just like, okay, I keep doing this and I feel good about it. But sometimes I question, am I doing what I'm supposed to be? Yeah. And then I think, am I making a difference because I really want to? I do. And then I have people who showed up today that show that, in fact, I do. Yes. And so those moments, I believe there are little crumbs along the journey, mm-hmm. right? That when you stop and think and pick up that crumb and say, okay, that I can also put it in the chest of my heart to help me continue the journey. So today was one of those moments as we cut that uh, cu- ribbon. ribbon. <laughs> <laughs> and I was standing right next to you to see you do that. It took a lot to get to that place mm-hmm. for you to do it. I'm still talking about your future. I am still want to know, let's say tomorrow you woke up and this is not available. Actually, let's talk about that. Because I want to thank the people who didn't believe in me. Come on. Because that is where the, it's not available. Mm. So I'm going to back this up a little bit. I went through a lot of different trials. It didn't start with just sitting on that curb Mm -hmm. that I told you. You introduced me to some great people that allowed me to be in front of a screen. Mm -hmm. I had no idea what that meant. But I had a message and I wanted to deliver it. And then we had things happen. Then I went out on my own and I decided I'll just take my show on the road. Mm-hmm. And then I would and go you to the And you show, did. You came to my house. I with did. Those. I did. I had my phone. <laughs> yeah. I had my own lighting, yeah. my own little, you know, gear of every kind. And I figured out how to edit everything on the phone. And it was so exhausting. Yes, it was. I, I will never have to do that again. <laughs> yes. But I had to learn all the different things. I was like up here and then I fell back. And in that time frame, I had a few people that said, this isn't for you. Mm. You, you should be doing something else. <laughs> then I had people quit on me that I mm. needed, which is why I went to learn how to do it on my phone. Yeah. And then 2020 hit. Yep. Then we're all sitting in front of the screens. Our screens. <laughs> and now we're having to figure out how to communicate with people. And I'm like, how am I going to keep my show going? Yeah. I can't go see the people anymore. Yeah. I can't go to a studio. I can't yeah. bring them in. Yeah. So what am I do? So we all know what Zoom was all about. Mm-hmm. Then you're like, oh, that's not good quality. Yeah. And then I got knocked down again because I had relied on someone and they said, I just, I got something else I'm doing in my life. And I went, ups and downs. Yeah. Right? And then but I was the like, okay. Continues. So in that four or five month span, I was like, okay, this isn't meant for me. You're right. Yeah. I got it. <laughs> no more said, I heard the voice you said, now yes. I'm just going to do it. Yeah. And I was lost. Mm. And then I, again, felt like, Am I doing what I'm supposed to? I remember that phone call. (laughs) Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Yes. And then I said no, and it kept hitting me again, like when I was sitting on that curb Mm -hmm. in 2019. And it was hitting me even harder. I'm like, what am I supposed to do, and how am I supposed to do this? Because I'm sorry. I don't know how to do this anymore, and I'm not going to go back to using my phone to try and start this. And then um, I was introduced by a common friend of yours and mine to the studio where I am today, and it is now where it is, and I feel at home. I love it. I love when it falls. It's like a puzzle, right? The pieces are missing, and we are seeking after the pieces. We are looking for them. But sometimes they are right in front of our eyes, but we're still looking for them all over the place until the ha-ha moment, and pop, we take it. And when we put it in, it fits. So you you are fit here. It, it, it happens here for you and things. I would love at this moment to give you the opportunity to t- look into the camera and talk to someone right now that's being told that your pain is too great, you can't go forward, your um, passion is too much, you can't, you don't have the skill for this, you can't continue moving into this direction because it's not you, you don't have the resources to make this happen, but here you are. So I think I will say that you're an expert now in that (laughs) chair to be able to look in their eyes. Now you're in my chair, but yes. (laughs) In that chair over there, (laughs) this is where the expert is sitting down to look over there and tell somebody they can, they will, and they have to. You know, I find it interesting, Christine, (laughs) that you're now calling me the expert. So thank you. you. We're all going to go through our trials. And because this is my stories of hope, with a tragedy that changed my life forever, I can't go back and change it. 
maybe somebody doesn't deal with a tragedy. I mean, one doesn't deal with an illness or an unforeseen circumstances that someone else would say, I can't imagine. How many times have we heard, I can't imagine? Yeah, can't imagine. Or someone telling you, you can't do something. You can. Yes, you can. I've had tragedy, and I just talked about how I try to get my stories of hope up off the ground. And I'm sure there's other stuff that's going to come about. I hope no more tragedies. <laughs> no. I really do. But if it comes to trying to figure out how to do other things to keep what I'm doing, that's the passion in my heart, then I'll keep doing it because I know I can, because I've proven that I can. Yes. And the one thing I've learned, Christine, is we're not alone. You're Where's not Miss alone. Christine. We are not like Christine. <laughs> we, we love saying that when we go around yeah, town. Yes. The Christines. Yeah. Um, the thing that I had to overcome was the chatter mm. of other people because they didn't I see what that. I did. I love that. The right? chatter. It's the chatter. Whatever's in your heart, stop resisting it. Yeah. It's yours. It's yours. Receive it, right? Mm -hmm. So I would love for us to put our hands out right now as we finish in with that receiving mode. Okay. And I will say that may you always receive as you have put out but double portion of what you have put out. Mm -hmm. Because it's also, those who don't learn how to receive, I believe it's, uh, it's pride or something that stop us from being good receivers. Those of us who are only givers, it tends to happen to us that we don't know how to receive. And so today, if there is one thing that I will say to those who are watching us right now, the story of hope is a story of giving. And because you have been given something now through this story, I will hope that you will give it to somebody else and that person will receive it with kindness, love, and gentleness. Because you are so gentle in your way of bringing people back. <laughs> I've had to pull, rope a few people back. pulling them back <laughs> and things like that. So I want to thank you for giving me the opportunity. As I said, it was a gift. I receive it kindly. I say thank you for this gift of being with you in the studio today. It's an amazing day for you. It's a historical day for you. You have made history. This is the first time you and a woman from your family is able to stand with so many people and acclaim you for who you truly are. You are in your shoes. You are in your skin. This is what you were born to do. Mm -hmm. That's the reason why it felt so hard to do something different than this. Mm -hmm. And so I encourage you to continue your passion and to push through in every which way and make it the rest of the show is yours. Thank you. <laughs> love you. I oh, love you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your time and sitting in my seat. <laughs> because it's you really good in here. <laughs> in you seat. pushed me out of another comfort, but I know yeah. I'm going to get my seat back. Yes, yes, you will. <laughs> I enjoyed the opportunity for you to do the reverse on the um, interview with me. Yeah. And we didn't have to talk specific about my trauma or my journey of losing my daughter, but I do want to acknowledge two things. Because I did sit with you in 2019 when you asked me and met me for the first time what was my story and didn't know it. And New Year's Day is coming up right around the corner and this will be for me 16 years of my daughter's passing, Nicole Marie. And that's tough. And I know that when that 17th year comes I'm going to have a really hard time because then I'm going to have to know this person's gone is almost longer than I knew her. But yeah. I have the memories and I want to share that with other people too. That Embrace life. Yes. Embrace memories. Take lots of pictures. Everyone knows that's what I love to <laughs> I do. I love to do that too. <laughs> life is about an experience. It's not about chasing money. It's not about chasing the fastest thing or the prettiest thing or the whatever you think is better. It's who you are making yourself a better person. Mm -hmm. But the other recognition I want to share is that when we sat down and you asked me my story, you now share that same story, unfortunately. Yes, we have. And I want you to tell us who your son is because you just, you mean that much to me. Well, and, uh, it's been a year now, mm -hmm. August uh, 3rd um, this year. I lost my 30-year-old son with a massive heart attack. It was a sudden death. And then we found out in the back end uh, that it was a congenital disease of the heart that he had. Um, he left a wife. Uh, who had three children, 
that he was helping her raise. And those are part of my family now. Um, a sister who's in medical school right now, a father who no longer have a son, and a mother who no longer have a son. But in the process, what I keep telling people is that never leave your loved one without telling them you love them. I spoke with my son and text with him between the hours 8.45 that morning until about 11.45. And my, my, his sister spoke with him at 2 o'clock. And so all of this time, he keep hearing it from us. He heard it, that I love you. When we hang up, when we text, I still have that text on my phone. His sister still have the text on his phone. So we love him and he loves us. What is his name? Sean William Ellis. I call him Mr. President. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Thank you. Thank you. I never thought we would be sitting in a seat that we went, I shared my story as I have other people do here to help others that I was that person for you and we never ever saw that coming. No, and here we are. Right. Here we are. That's the reason why I know that your story, as I said, can elevate other people and it will make their pain not less, but more bearable. Absolutely, it's never yeah. less, but it is yes. more bearable. Yes. Thank you for sharing, him and Thank sharing you. your time. Yes. Thank you to my Studio sponsor, The Motivated Mind Group, your global creative agency located here in downtown Chandler. It's my new home for Stories of Hope. We just proved that with this ribbon cutting today. Yay. And I am excited to give you more stories here to come <laughs> day forward. Um, if you have a story you want to share, know someone who has a story, want to be a sponsor. <laughs> Absolutely. I recommend it. <laughs> Please email me to the address of stories at christinehotchkiss.com. Yes. Until next time, everyone, I wish you well, and you take care.